Okay, here we have a Parrot AR Drone 2 with its indoor hull. The indoor hull is characteristically protecting all the blades and is designed for knocks against walls, etc. So if you're indoors in a constrained, confined area, this is a perfect hull to uh, survive better the knocks and bashes and collapses and falls that you're going to have in the first early few days. However, um, it's okay to use outdoors. You can use this outdoors, but it is more likely to uh, meet and feel the wind as you're flying. Okay, same as the in outdoor hull, the indoor hull is held onto unit by a magnet. So on the rear, there's a there's a really nice discreetly hidden magnet. Let's just tilt that up and slide the unit forward off and over the camera, avoiding the blades as best as I can. So you get a little, uh, you might just be able to see through there, there's a little hole there. That is the clearance from upside down. If I turn this around, you can see a little bit better. There's a hole that you've actually got to um, slot this front facing 720p high def camera through to uh, ensure that the unit stays on. At the back, as I explained, there's a hidden magnet underneath this uh, strip here, which I'm gonna just try and catch in the light. There it is. So underneath there's a little magnet. Personally, I actually also add a few elastic bands and I'll show you that in another video, but uh, uh, it's, uh, it, it's good enough. And for the indoor hull, certainly I've had never any complaints with it coming off. Okay, so push that aside. Most of the time you're gonna fire this outdoors and most of the time, once you're used to it, you're gonna use the outdoor hull. I've got here the orange and blue hull. I thought that the orange would stand out most clearly in the sky and uh, it's, it's proven to be very good and very visual. Again, you hook it on over the camera and then pop it down and again the magnet takes play and holds the um, body onto the actual AR drone. There's a reasonably good grip but like I say I've actually, I actually used some elastic bands to also hold the unit on. I don't want this coming off because underneath here you've got your battery and other gubbins. Okay so I've already got a battery already in place. The actual battery sits on a really nice, you can see that moving around quite nicely without the drone moving. There's a really nice little foam suspension bed that it sits in. The battery fits where the cable for the battery itself is out the front and the unit itself has the connector and power connector out the back. I'm just going to unplug this just so you can see what I mean. So this wire is part of the battery. It's held on by a Velcro strap so I can pick up the unit by the battery. But it adds a nice separate kind of suspension so that the battery and the weight of the battery doesn't impact uh, too much on the actual flight characteristics of the helicopter. When you connect the two connections together, the AR drone will do a couple of self-tests. You'll see by these red glows on the tablecloth that it's uh, communicating, checking with each motor what it's doing. It will then do a little, a little <laughs> movement of the blades. So uh, please don't block it when you're doing that because it's just to check that the unit itself can communicate with each of its motors and then it's all good and ready to fly. Now at this state, I've got two greens at the front and Four, two greens at the back and those four lights are telling me that it's good to take off so I can fly that unit as now obviously I'm going to want to put my cover on to protect it but it's good to fly so you need an iPhone or an Android phone or an iPad or similar tablet and the AR drone software which is free off the internet to control and, and fly this drone now there's also one socket here which is hidden within the Velcro sleeve itself and it sits at the top of the battery and it's actually a USB connector and in this USB connector you can plug any type of standard memory stick so I've got here a little SanDisk unit happens to be 8 gig certainly doesn't need to be that big and you can plug that unit into there as you can see it's already got power there's a little light on okay it's flashing away it's quite merry that's a it's part becomes part of the unit and then you've got the option through again the software on your devices to tell the unit to record its HD video either over the Wi-Fi to your phone direct or to the USB stick which I've now got mounted internal of the camera personally I'm finding that the internal recorded movies have a slightly better more vibrant color quality and um, slightly smoother slicker video and I've got some uh, options and uh, both ways of recording videos of similar footage on my uh, channel so please take a look. Um, I certainly recommend getting additional batteries as you can see I've got one here sitting in the charger 
make sure um, you get official Parrot AR Drone 2 batteries. Don't buy the older AR Drone 1. They're completely different and it's not just about milliamp hours etc. These charge differently. These have connect cable connections that are different as well so that's not compatible with the original AR Drone. However what is still compatible, quite a few of the parts are which is quite good. So the copter blades themselves are compatible with the 1 and the 2 and the cogs that the uh, above the motors between the blade and the motor and the pin and here are the pins talk of the pins you can hear them just inside their sil silver foil and I'm sure when you've had a few accidents etc you'll be much more familiar with the way that the motors sit just slightly uh, below or above the foot depending on which way you're looking at it recessed into the unit the actual motors are along that line let me just put the blade there so you can see better and then forward by about half an inch or about a centimeter and a half there is a pinion going through um, um, a device where the gears transfer the power from the motor onto the blades so these cogs and these gears and the blades and the pins are all separate and repairable and certainly this is where the damage is going to happen on your blades on your quadcopter and uh, certainly you want to get used to and think about this unit as a repairable um, it absolutely is it's very tough but it's certainly a unit that you're going to repair to keep it flying for a long time and have many uh, many happier hour flying. Okay, I'm going to uh, show you now a few other parts to the uh, AR drone and um, I'm just going to quickly bring back the indoor hull and move the quadcopter away just briefly. So when you get the unit, you've also got um, a few little orange tags that you want to use around the place. Just peel these back. These actually are just covering oh. <laughs> these are just attached to easy peel plastic that are covering and protecting your uh, parrot drone from wear and tear and although this one didn't uh, didn't do anything useful I'll fiddle about after this video but you'll get a much sleeker line and this uh, this plastic is unnecessary okay I've got to um, I've now got to uh, find a way of peeling that off there but I'll do that off camera okay great unit I recommend it